Hey guys, welcome to my channel, and today we are going to be working on this Chinese Kipper Generator KGE 3000 Ti. I got this generator from a gentleman who was actually buying a new machine. Uh, the cost for him to get this machine repaired just wasn't worth it, and I got it for about $75 US. And the good thing is, is that it still makes power. The bad news is that the engine does not run, most likely because the carburetor was extremely clogged up. He originally had the rubber feet on here, which made it extremely difficult to move, but he had it inside his RV, so the rubber feet made more sense. But he was able to find the wheel kit, and I did put this on. Dry weight, this is about 132 pounds, and it does have some gasoline in it, and he did put some fresh fuel in, thinking that it might solve the problem, but unfortunately the carburetor was pretty gummed up. It's pretty heavy, but this is a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter, and the cool thing is that he was able to give me the original manual, I can't seem to find it at the moment, but it is from 2006. Now, what I was able to research from Kipper is that in, in the United States, they did have a, an American division here in Salt Lake City, Utah, but they went out of business a few years ago. And this was most popular with uh, like campingworld.com in the RV world. And that's where this generator really uh, got to see some use. But unfortunately, they are no longer made here in the United States. They're no longer imported from what I can tell. And the latest version, you could still get them, just not in this country. It's the IG3000, which is the same exact generator on this. Now, in order to get access to the carburetor and the air box, as you can see, I've had to remove a lot of the generator just to get to it and to see what was going on. And he did also say that the inverter unit was replaced a few years ago. Now, this inverter unit, you can still get it on eBay, but it's about eight, nine hundred dollars but it looks in really good shape and i did see when i was able to get this running on starter fluid that this does generate power the green indicator did come on and that's a good thing you could see it right here that light did come on when i was able to get it running on starting fluid and i think i made a good buy it looks to be a honda clone to be honest because the carburetor is very similar to that i did remove the stepper motor so i can work on it and ultrasonic clean it i'm not sure if it has another problem because i see that he told me he had replaced the battery but as you can see this battery saw either a lot of heat or it was overcharging it started bulging out this battery is obviously toast so we'll have to replace it and if it is overcharging the battery we're going to have to dig a little bit deeper into why that is so I was able to already ultrasonic clean the carburetor and it's ready to go and be put back into the machine. And I, again, I do apologize. I wasn't able to get a lot of this stuff on camera. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this back together and make sure that everything is working as it should, drain the oil, put some new oil in and change the spark plug out. I did take the spark plug out and it actually looks good. Doesn't look like to, it was running rich or anything like that, but this, Looks to be a pretty good generator, although it was sitting inside an RV compartment for a very long time. If anyone in the community knows where I can potentially get parts for this generator, there's just a few small things like the door latch here is, the plastic is broken here, and some of the smaller stuff like the grommets and whatnot. I, other than that, I don't see any other adverse wear on this generator. So let's see if we can get this back together and running again. Here we got the generator back on the ground and just decided to clean up the spark arrestor here. As you can see, the muffler has got some decent amount of corrosion, but in order to get to it, the whole heat shield would have to come off and I don't see any rot. It looks just to be surface rust, so I'm just gonna leave it be. And what I really want to know is, will this make power properly and will it run smoothly? So that's the next step. Okay, here we have it running, it lives, and the good thing to note is that it's charging with less than an amp, which is telling me about 13 and a half volts, tells me that the charging system is working the way it should, so it looks like that battery must have shorted out from the frame or something, but it's got a 1500 watt load on it, 
letting it run, and it's running in five degree weather at the moment. And the electric start works, so does the recoil. Cleaned up the carburetor. Smart throttle should work as well. And that's with half a load on it. And the output voltage is steady at 119 volts. Now one thing I want to make sure everyone's aware, if you ever work on one of these inverter generators, there is that little spring moving. When you take that stepper motor off, that spring is going to go flying. And if you're not careful, you're going to lose it. So just be aware that that little spring acts as a damper when the stepper motor is trying to keep the engine running at a proper speed. You're going to need that spring. And I haven't been able to find any parts for this uh, machine, unfortunately. Thankfully, it hasn't had as many problems as I thought. Well, I'd say this is a pretty successful test. We're going to put this side piece back on and we're going to have to order a new battery. But it looks like this machine is good to go after an oil change, of course. And no adverse issues with the charging system. Still running at about 13 and a half volts. So that's great. Here's the low idle with the smart throttle engaged. So that's about as low as it can go. I'm sure I can actually get it to go a little bit lower, but I don't think that's gonna be necessary. And if you can bring it back up. Sounds good. Well, everyone, looks like I'm gonna be able to end this video on a high note. We have this Kipper generator running the way it should. I'm going to go do an oil change off camera here and that should be good to go for this machine. I've already put the side piece back on, everything's put back together and then I even went as far as cleaning up this window so I can see how much fuel is left. They start to get cloudy over time but it looks like I got about a quarter tank of gas left. It, the empty is on this side and the full is on this side. I'm looking at it upside down. Always keep in mind with any generator, if you have it on the generator, there's a petcock usually on the bottom of the bowls. Some of them have them, some of them don't. This will actually give you the convenience of opening up this valve and draining off any fuel that was left in the bowl after you turn off the gas petcock valve right here. That way that nothing gets gummed up inside that carburetor again. And a quick note on this DC outlet here. When I measure it, it's actually about 22 volts DC coming out of here, but this is a 12 volt 8.3 amp and it's just being run by a simple bridge rectifier. It is unfiltered DC. And if you see more than 12 volts on here, it's when you connect it to a battery is really what you're gonna pay attention to to make sure that it's working properly. There isn't much that can go wrong with it, but I'm gonna see if I can try to find this cord and just have it on hand. It's not something that normally people would use, but it's good to have all the accessories with the machine. My final note on this machine is that it turns out, even though the Kipper has gone out of business here in the United States, there was another video that I saw that had this exact generator and they were able to buy a much less expensive inverter unit from Champion. Now, Champion Generator is also a Chinese-made company where they import a lot of the machines here in the United States. And some of them are hit or miss, but a lot of them have some pretty good features. I would not be a bit surprised if Kipper is now champion generator and some of these parts cross, but it looks to be a great generator. It's pretty heavy, but you get 3000 watts of power, which is great. And I'm excited to have it, but I will eventually sell it and see if anyone would be interested in it. I'm glad that I have the wheel kit because this thing's a lot easier to move around. I'm going to have to get a new battery. Here is the battery ETX9-BS and it's a 9 amp hour battery. And thankfully it looks like it just might have shorted out here. That's why it's all bulged out and whatnot. 
not fun and I think I know the reason why I probably ground it up to the frame this was on the ground it was not properly put on there and I could not find the red one so there's a good chance that it just simply shorted out and touched the frame somewhere thankfully it didn't take out any of the electronics as always if there are any questions please feel free to leave a comment in the description below thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel take care everyone